mate, you paid a can of Coke and bought a property. My dad tells me he once stopped on the side of the road and bought a property from the cash he had from his cash register that day. That's how cheap real estate was back then, right? Welcome to the Urban Property Investor. I'm your host, Sam Saggers, here to help you crack the code of real estate wealth. And today, we've got a special edition of Code Cracking. We're actually going to take on an idea which most property investors are absolutely addicted to. If property investors were cocaine addicts, growth is without question the cocaine addiction of property investors. Last episode, we took apart the idea that real estate and the sustainability or the ability for real estate to grow over the long term is evolving. If you heard that episode, you would have learned some key fundamentals of what is going on in society, trends and influences which are reshaping everything. I'm a big believer that society is being split in two, the have and have not marketplace exists, the have and have not tenant is real. And of course, today, if you want capital growth, you need to invest in two big lessons, value bombs I taught last time. They are the value bomb of location, location, location. And of course, the biggest value bomb of them all in 2020, the decade of disruption The idea of livability, livability, livability. But the long line of capital growth is something every property investor is in the queue for right now. Now, as you're probably aware, this podcast is me talking. There's no co-host here. I haven't interviewed anyone. And over the episodes, I'm going to really delve into helping you understand real estate. Eventually, I'll bring on some people to interview, but I say bugger that right now. Let's get down to some lessons about real estate. Do you really want to hear someone umming and ahhing about if the market is good or that they are an expert on depreciation or something along those lines? No, Bugger that. Let's get through to the big topics. I'm keen to talk about ideas around the real world, around what can put money into your back pocket. And ultimately, there's that word which we agreed last time we would never use that you can retire wealthy from real estate. So we did the sustainability of growth idea. We worked out livability. Today's lesson is really understanding and moving into how we can make money from buying real estate and not wait for the market to do the work for us. So real estate does have some risks. And I think we need to touch on the risk before we move to the exciting part of today's podcast, which is the idea of creating your own growth, the addiction for property investors. However, what can happen is real estate can get nasty for people. Real estate can go backwards. Real estate has a liquidity risk. In other words, if you own real estate and you need to sell it in a quick period of time, real estate is not something you can sell in a day. There's damage risk to properties. I think one of the biggest risks right now to real estate investors is insurance. Premiums are going up. We're seeing black swan and green swan events, environmental concerns, reshaping where we should buy real estate. Now, the first part of the lesson is really to understand that whatever we buy from a growth point of view is going to carry some sort of risk But we need to really drill down. We want to avoid going negative. In other words, going backwards. We want to buy some real estate, which if we had to offload it, we could. It's sellable. 
we want to make sure we're not in a volatile area because of insurance concerns. We don't want to be in cyclone-prone areas. We don't want to be in bushfire-prone areas. We also have learned that to sustain growth from real estate, we need to consider the idea of livability, livability, livability. So let's get into it. What about making your own growth? This is the question to answer today. I want to make my own growth. I do not want the market to do it for me. How do I go about doing that? So there are things or strategies or properties which I'm about to explain how they work, how you can go and find them. You can apply them to your portfolio, but remember there are principles. Now, I always teach the 4x growth plan, four times growth. Growth comes in four different dynamics. The first dynamic, of course, is making your own growth from buying property well, from getting a deal. And today, I'm going to go into deal making and what that truly means for property investors. The second way to create growth is location growth. So location is really important to the overall puzzle of growth. The third element of capital growth is the market. The market. Is Melbourne going to grow? Is Brisbane going to grow? Is Sydney going to grow? That's a very broad thing to dissect. And the fourth form of growth of the 4X growth plan is what I call behavioural growth. What trends, what influences, what behaviours actually distort real estate's value so it grows well. It could be a great view. It could be a beautiful backyard. It could be a really well-designed property. It could be an element which is just giving your property that extra boost of capital growth compared to the rest of the market. So how do we measure growth? How do we look at growth and measure it? Well, this is how I measure growth. Growth to me is a property doubling in value in 13 to 15 years. Growth to me is property doubling in value in 13 to 15 years. So we buy a $500,000 property. We want to come back 13 to 15 years later and see that property have doubled in value. Now, this is a very, very interesting part of the Forex growth plan, something a lot of people miss because a lot of people will measure growth based on cash on cash return, which is a good mechanism for growth, but it will not allow your property to double. So let me explain further because this is technical. This is, this is professor stuff. You buy a property today for $400,000. You put a $40,000 deposit down on the property. You've put 10% into the property. If you can get growth of $40,000 within 12 months of buying that $400,000 property, your value of your real estate would be $440,000. In other words, you've put $40,000 in, and all of a sudden, your return on that $40,000 is actually 100% because you've gained $40,000. You've invested forty, dollars you've gained forty, dollars you've got 100% cash on cash return, which is a, a fantastic result. But here's the kicker. Your property still needs to go and double in value. You still need to see a lot of growth for you to reach the target of seeing your property double in value. In the example I just gave, you would need to see $360,000 more of an increase for your property to double in value. So 90% of your wealth is not going to come from cash on cash return. 
A good cash on cash situation is 100% return on your capital. Most property investors use 10% capital. So some property investors use 20%, 100% on 20%, much better. But we are talking 100% on 100% of debt, 100% of the property's value. So we've got a long journey, folks. This is the journey of wealth creation. It is not going to happen from cash on cash return. So the Forex growth plan is about cash on cash return, but that is the first 10 to 20% of the growth plan of a property, not the balancing 80 to 90%. So here is the value bomb. Remember, we are trying to peel back capital growth. Here is the value bomb. 80 to 90% of your property wealth is going to come from three other places you are not looking at right now. You are looking at cash on cash return. Here's the three other places. Location, 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 one place. And of course, as I alluded to, livability today is very much the location, location, location strategy. So all of a sudden, location has gone from the view of the beach to I'm in the beach area. And that all of a sudden is the new location or livability Uh, concept in real estate so we're going to get more growth from the location we're also going to get more growth from the market now the market is something which i think that a lot of people misunderstand you know in brisbane there's the new housing market second-hand housing market the middle ring market the outer ring market the inner urban market there's the prestige market So there's markets within markets. There's a lot of layers to a property market. But we're going to see, remember, we're getting cash on cash return. I'm going to talk you through some deals where you can make cash on cash return, which is good. You want cash on cash return because it recycles your money, keeps you moving. You feel like you're growing your wealth. But remember, cash on cash return in the wrong marketplace, in the wrong location, with no behavioural economic logic, is a famous English saying, fool's gold, fool's gold. So this is what a lot of people do. They go out, they find a deal they can make some money on immediately. They can put their $40,000 into a deal. They can pull $40,000 out quickly. But here's the problem. They buy in a bad location. They buy in a market which is not going anywhere. And they ultimately, there's that word again, actually struggle to choose a very good behavioral property. Something which is going to create an emotion or an opinion to someone else. So, am I confusing you? Do you guys feel confused? I'm going to lay it out. One more time. One more time. Sometimes you've got to run with the back of the pack with this stuff. So here's for the back of the pack. We've got the 4X growth plan. The first part of the plan, first part of the puzzle is we're going to buy a deal to make us money. Now I'm going to park that for a moment. I'm going to come back to that. Second part of the puzzle, we're going to choose a property in a good location. I will teach you about locations, but for the time being... For this podcast today, just we want to know that it is a very livable, very functional, very good area that people have a high opinion of. It's a good location. Third part of the puzzle, the market. The market, we need the market to grow. We need the location to grow. And the final part of the puzzle is behavioral logic around growth, walkability, mobility, proximity, desirability, design, elevation, views. These are all things which add so much value to properties increasing. I've seen 
firsthand from my own property. I flipped it. I flipped. I'm going to tell you a story. Bought a property, $640,000. Good buy. It had the most amazing expansive views. So when I bought the property, I paid market value. I got no cash on cash return. The location I chose, absolutely fantastic. The market I chose for this deal, Brisbane. Everyone says they haven't made money in Brisbane. The one I'm about to talk you through, I pulled out $200,000. So how is that possible? Why did I pull out $200,000 and the rest of people who have bought in Brisbane complain about Brisbane? Well, I followed behavioural logic around growth. Let me explain. Bought a property, got a fair price, $640,000. Bought in a great location, 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 location. The opinion of that property was strong. The ability to sell that property high. The market did nothing. 0% capital growth. 0%. The behavior of the view uninterrupted created $200,000 of growth. Public record, public record. You can look it up. 640, sold 840, $200,000 worth of growth. How long did I own it? Three years. 200 Gs in three years. Not bad. So I tell you what, like the reality is the money's out there. You've just got to like understand there are more elements to growth than the idea of just one. There are four. Today, I want to teach you the big four so you can do real estate well. If you want to flip real estate, you can do that. Flippers can absolutely crush it if that's what they want to do. I'm not a big fan of the flip. But I do do them. The problem with the flippers, of course, is you lose a lot of that gain that you make in tax. Designing for the flip is possible. People who want to flip need to use the final part of the Forex growth plan, behavioural growth. Because when you're flipping, you're selling. It's easier to buy real estate than it is to sell real estate. Much easier to buy it than sell it. So if you are going to trade your location, your market, and of course the behaviours your property has will influence people to buy it. Does that make sense? I think it does. I think we're starting to crack the code today, which is of course the code of making money through growth. Let's get into the strategies. This is what you've been waiting for. And these are the strategies which are about the idea of cash on cash return now remember cash on cash is just a small part of the puzzle but a very important part of the puzzle but not the entire measurement of growth we want properties to double over 13 to 15 years we want to buy a four hundred thousand dollar property today make 10 percent, make 20 percent today but we also have a journey to go on and we need 80 percent of the wealth of real estate to come from the three other Drivers of growth, location, market, behavior. So what I'm talking about today is where a lot of people come unstuck because they get so worked up with the idea of making instant money that they forget the fundamental of real estate is location, location, market, market, behavior, behavior. So they attack the fool's gold, grab it, and then wonder where the rest of the growth is going to come. They create and pull out equity of the properties that they attract and then those properties go backwards or negative equity. And then the biggest risk to a property investor is the fool's gold investment. The fool's gold investment is where you tap equity out of something where you're getting instant cash on cash return from and then it goes backwards or plateaus, does nothing and you don't moment. So the strategies I'm about to tell you, I only use if the other three X's of growth are there. This is the first X, but I would not use these without the second and third and fourth of the 4X growth plan. We're getting the picture here. 
We've got a big job to do as property investors and to unpack this, I'm going to start with some great ways to make money. Now, as many of you would have done yourselves as a strategy, the idea of subdivisions and amalgamations and duplexes. These are great ways to make money. In fact, in my own property journey, I've done this strategy over and over again. I really love the idea that you can buy some land and simply draw a dotted line, get a planner to draw a dotted line, lodge it with council, pay some fees, turn one title into two or three titles, and then you have added value to real estate. Sometimes real estate creation is about thinking outside the box and looking at what the opportunities are to add value to your wealth position. Subdivisions are great. Now, I think most people would understand it, but again, I'll run with the back of the pack. The simple concept is the formulation of buying one title of land and then turning it into two or more titles. You can do this with land, but you can also do it with the subdivision of buildings. And this is where we often see, which I think is the best version of this for most mum and dad investors, is the duplex. The duplex to me is really one of the most ultimate ways to create instant equity. Remember, the duplex should not be in Humpty Do. No one wants to live in Humpty Do. The duplex should not be in Lake Weedo. No one wants to live in Lake Weedo. The duplex needs to be in a great pocket close to the epicenter of our major areas, right? So if it's in Newcastle, I did one in Newcastle myself. I did it in Edgeworth. Edgeworth is 15 minutes out of town. Great little area, uh, close to the beaches, close to the motorway, close to everything Newcastle has to offer. So what did I do? I bought a block of land. I built a duplex, so two houses side by side. On completion, I paid to have them split in two, created two backyards. Of course, then I had two properties from one title. The uplift was fantastic. I bought the property for 670 Today, it's worth 900 So you can see the jump in value. Now, I wouldn't have done that again if it was in Weirdoville. It was part of the major realm of one of Australia's biggest cities. Newcastle is the sixth or seventh biggest city in Australia, so it makes a lot of sense. Duplexes. What I love today amalgamations. Now this one you probably haven't seen around, but this is absolutely gold. Duplexes and subdivision is really the idea that a title gets divorced. In other words, you're, you're pulling apart one title to create two. You're splitting. You're having a divorce, a property divorce. But what about if a property was to get married? What about if it was the bachelor of real estate? Well, the amalgamation strategy is the bachelor of real estate. You are simply finding a property and adding another one to it. You're creating an opportunity where you take out the neighbor and amalgamate. And all of a sudden, by creating a new version of real estate, a married version of real estate, you can quite often have a very valuable piece of dirt or actually a very valuable property which you've designed and put together. Now, I do this strategy a lot with the three-bedroom marketplace. What I do, I go and find a two-bedroom property, next door a one-bedroom property. I amalgamate the two to create a three-bedroom property. 
Why I do that is the uplift of three bedrooms versus two bedrooms is quite significant. In other words, if using easy mathematics, I had 100 square meters of three bedroom without having the amalgamation, let's say it's trading at 20,000 a meter. That means my real estate is going to be 20,000 a meter. Get the old calculator out. 20,000 times 100 is $2 million, right? So if we've got $2 million worth of real estate, which is a three-bedroom three property, and all of a sudden we get a one and two bedroom and put it together, I'm just using, uh, you know, any logic here, any mathematic logic, right? We get a two and a one bedroom and we can put that together, but it's only 10,000 a metre to amalgamate those two because they're cheaper, because the downsize of the cash market doesn't want it. All of a sudden, we get this valuation uplift by combining the two properties. Now, I love doing this at design stage, before the property is built. So I find a two-bedroom and a one-bedroom at a really good square metre rate, put them together. Because I put them together, all of a sudden I've created a marriage, done the bachelor, and the square metre rate for the three-bedroom is much higher. I get the uplift. So awesome strategy. The reason I do it is downsizes. Downsizes are wealthy. Right? They all bought houses for a can of Coke back in 1965. Every other downsizer complain about the world. In fact, one of my pet hates is hanging out with downsizers at coffee shops where they eat muffins and talk about world affairs and complain about how expensive life is. Well, I tell you what, you're not paying the amount you're, we have to go and pay to buy real estate. You paid a can of Coke and bought a property. My dad tells me he once stopped on the side of the road and bought a property from the cash he had from his cash reg register that day. That's how cheap real estate was back then, right? So let's not beat around the bush. The debt bomb has been passed on to us. We now have to manage it really well. Properties are expensive today. So you've got to get your ducks in a row. This is not 1975. You can't just buy any property and hope it goes up in value. If you do, you are dreaming, ladies and gentlemen. Let's move through the puzzle together. Amalgamations are a great way to play the game of real estate and a great way to get growth. I love tar targeting downsizers because they're wealthy. They've got a lot of cash. And there are not a lot of three bedrooms produced. Most apartments produced today in the production line of real estate. Remember, in Australia, we need a new property every three minutes and 55 seconds. The production line of real estate creates a one and two bedroom and even a four bedroom house often. Now, you think about that. You go to a house and land community, a sprawling neighborhood. What are you going to get? you're going to get a four-bedroom house. You go to an inner urban area, a neighbourhood of production, you're probably going to get a one- or a two-bedroom apartment because they sell more because there's more of the market that will buy off the plan one- and two-bedrooms. Three-bedrooms, downsizers are very discerning. So you need to be able to marry the right property to the right demographic. So the next strategy, we're going to move on to renovation. Renovation. Now, I love renovating. I just did a renovation, enjoyed the whole experience. I sat on a chair and let tradespeople in to design, renovate, and upgrade my most recent renovation. I do absolutely nothing in a renovation. That is because my hands are soft. If you come and see my hands, they're, they are, they're like ladies' hands. I have ladies' hands. 
My hands are not designed for a hammer nor for a nail and I certainly think people who have the ability to do that kind of stuff are absolutely amazing. But here's what I think of renovations. Unless you're flipping, renovations should be done and I call this the 7 to 12 year itch. The 7 to 12 year itch. You want to renovate later in the piece. Now, this is my concept of renovation. Every property I buy, I depreciate the value. I buy newer and I watch the value of the the asset deteriorate. I claim all the deductions of the deterioration of the building. Then I go back and renovate. I don't renovate, watch the renovation deteriorate and then go and renovate. That would be renovating twice. I renovate once. I buy a newer property with better design features, with the right amenity, the right look and feel, the right behaviour and I watch it deteriorate, I come back, renovate once. Now I do that using... The money I've made from the 4X growth plan. I want the 4X growth plan to work before I renovate because I have then gone through a complete cycle of a property going from its purchase price to doubling in value. Then the renovation starts again. Why does it start again? The cycle has started again. So all of a sudden my property needs to be uplifted to be in line with market. So renovation is a key principle. A lot of people will renovate, add some value and hold the asset and come back and renovate 10 years later. I just see it as renovating twice. The other concept to really break down here with renovation is there are two types of renovation. There are structural renovations which really do need council approval, lots of builders, they are very expensive, they are really hundreds of thousands of dollar renovations. I do really put this in the category of small development because you are getting development applications a lot of the time and redoing with architects some serious components of homes. So major renovations are not for me personally in my strategy. I have seen people who have done them very well. They are not for me because they are capital intensive. Capital intensive. I prefer cosmetic renovations, cosmetic renovations where I can come back and put a coat of paint, new kitchen, some better cabinetry, think about the aesthetics of the property, go through flooring, lighting, blinds, fixtures, fittings, and I really add value to the real estate that way. Remember, for me, I'm the seven-year itch guy. I get itchy in seven years. I do it at the end of a growth pattern not at the start to create cash on cash return but don't let me stand in your way if that's your dream to be a renovator and a lot of people watch the block and get pretty pumped up that they want to chuck in the towel and do renovations full time just remember when you do that you are also chucking in your job many people really struggle with the idea then to go and borrow because they are going into business for themselves as full-time renovators, which is a full-time job in that situation. So then you have this sort of period where the banks don't particularly like you. For me, the next section, knock down, rebuild. This is one of my favourites. The fact that you can go to a suburb today, identify a house which is absolutely shit and go and bulldoze it and start all over again and get a value-add uplift is phenomenal. 
Now, Knockdown Rebuild for me is best done in old established suburbs where you can buy really a property based on its land value. The house has deteriorated so much that you knock it down and the mathematical equation here allows you to actually build a brand new home but come in at a budget or a rate which creates you uplift. The neighbours' homes are ultimately, there's that word again, more expensive so you can benchmark off their value. So let me explain using a neighbourhood. Today in C4 Sydney, you can buy a property for $2 million and you would have a big block of land but a pretty horrible house. $2 million. And I'm using the extremes because I will point you in the right direction where this is cheaper to do. Sydney is a very expensive city, second most expensive city in the world behind Hong Kong. Probably going to overtake Hong Kong given what is going on with Hong Kong right now. So, $2 million. You knock it down. You then build a $1.5 million house on that block of land. You are now in it for 3.5 plus you've got your stamp duty and things like that, right? So you're in it probably closer to four. But that property, if built right, would be a $5 million home, assuming it's in the right area, right spot, right, right locality. So you can create a million dollars today, knock down, rebuild. If you've got the money, knock down, rebuild. I can show you where to do it. Knock down, rebuild. Most people who are property investors are shopping at three, four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars. They're like, Sam, what are you talking about? Who's got two million dollars to go and knock down a home? You're dreaming, buddy. Well, this is where you can do it. Brisbane. Brisbane is the most amazing city that you can still find opportunity within, say, 15 kilometres of the city centre where you can find an old house or sometimes even a spare block of land which you can build upon, knock down and build upon, and you can do that and achieve that from six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars $800,000. And here's the kicker. The rents are six, seven, eight hundred dollars $800, so they pay for the mortgage. So you can adapt a knockdown, rebuild, brand new mansion strategy in a neighbourhood of Brisbane to make money. We've done a couple of this year, absolute crackers. Uh, we have done one in Hendra. Hendra is a good spot right near Ascot. We knocked it down, put it back up, million bucks, Instant equity, 1.15. So 150 grand, but guess what? We've done the first phase of the Forex growth plan. We are now in a location, Hendra. Hendra is 7Ks to Brisbane CBD. Does that sound like a good location? Yes. All of a sudden, we're doing the Forex growth plan. So we know this stuff works. You can't knock down rebuild in Humpty Doo. No one wants to live in Humpty Doo, right? I, if you live in Humpty Doo and you're listening, I, you, I have been to Humpty Doo. It's uh, very hot. It's very hot. There's a lot of crocodiles and snakes and stuff. And I don't know how you guys live in Humpty Doo. Get out of Humpty Doo. So the next part of the puzzle is other people's time. Other people's time. If you want to make money, use other people's time. And this is where we do often talk about the strategy of off the plan. Pre-construction real estate. All pre-construction real estate is, is the idea that you put your deposit down on a property and you delay the settlement for two or three years while the property is built. You allow the area you're buying in to mature. You allow the property you're buying the ability to grow. And of course, on completion, you come along and get finance and settle. And you now have a property which you haven't had a mortgage for 
for a period of time. A lot of people do this from anywhere from six months all the way out to three years. The longer you extend the period, the more opportunity there is for you to make money, but also there are opportunities for you to change your life and save more money and put more money in your bank. Now, off the plan often gets a bad rap, particularly like by buyer's agents. And buyer's agents shit on off the plan because buyer's agents get paid to not do off the plan. So we all understand why they don't like it. Me personally, I've made a lot of money over the years out of off the plan. And I've always found the concept of it quite reliable. However, your skill set as an investor needs to be switched on. You can't be a unskilled property investor and do off the plan. You can't just guess and hope it's going to work. You want to make money out of off the plan? I'll tell you how to make money out of off the plan. You've got to understand floor plans. You've got to understand location. You've got to understand brand. You've got to understand price per square meter. You need to understand how a complex is going to add value to a neighborhood and actually grow the neighborhood's place as a better area to live. Off the plan is an awesome way to make money, but it is not for everyone. And the caveat is you need some help off the, on off the plan. You've got to reach out because we and me... I am an off-the-plan master. I tend to be able to be able to go, well, that floor plan in that direction, that will make money. That's going to be an absolute cracker. It's going to work. So the idea of off-the-plan is simple. You ride the ability for the market to grow. And I always measure off-the-plan perhaps a little bit different to other people. I'm not sure. But for me... I am measuring the concept that I put 10% down, I get paid interest on that 10%, just like I would if I just kept it in the bank account. I want by completion my real estate to have grown by 10%. So I'm 10% in, my real estate's now uh, grown by 10%. All of a sudden, I am getting a huge cash on cash return benefit But now I'm in a location which I want to get into to own a new property to start the Forex growth plan. In other words, I want to choose an area which is just exciting, it's going to grow. Uh, And really this is where brand and the person you're dealing with is really important. You want a brand name developer if you're going to choose that strategy because it is a very good strategy to make money. I just did one down in Melbourne. I bought off CBUS, big company, obviously big superannuation um, firm, bought in Collingwood, uh, put down a 10% deposit, picked up the asset for 830 on completion worth 950. How do I know that? Real estate agents are calling me going, please, can I sell your property? We will get you a million in auction. A million at auction. How much is it worth? They said at $9.50, we'll get you a million at auction. And my neighbor took the offer, not me. My neighbor took the offer, not me, went and sold. And today has pushed the equity value of my real estate up. Why don't I sell? Collingwood, great location, close to the city. Walkability is the behavior of that property. So I want to go through the Forex growth plan with you on that deal, right? Let's do it. Let's break this down. Do I do what I say? Absolutely. I created instant equity from the the off-the-plan opportunity. I now have it in location, location, location. We are two kilometers to the CBD Collingwood is the Surrey Hills of Melbourne as the Surrey Hills is is to Sydney. Third concept, Melbourne's property market. Until COVID came along, it was roaring in value. 
Markets are markets. The fourth version of growth, behavioral economic growth. What was the behavior I chose with that property? Well, here's the thing. It is 200 meters to East Melbourne. East Melbourne is the most expensive suburb by square meter of Melbourne. Crossing a road two to 300 meters away saw property values virtually go up by 30 to 40%. We call that the ripple in real estate. Let's take it a step further. Six minutes walk across Fitzroy Gardens, Melbourne, into the CBD. Here's the real kicker. The person who lives in my property into the future will not need to own a car. Why? It's a walkable property. It's a property where the occupant who lives there can walk. The behavioural logic of that real estate is probably the most, will provide probably the most growth to that real estate. Remember, I bought it off the plan, I got my 10%. Collingwood, good location, Melbourne, good city. The behaviour of walking is what I chose. So, the Forex growth plan at work. Off the plan, great strategy, not for everyone. You need some skill. You need the right people around you to show you what to do. If you don't, um, make sure you read up on it. Um, you don't want to just buy anything willy-nilly. And, of course, usually the right price, if it's the same price as the second-hand market, it's usually a big tick that you're doing the right thing and buying the right property. I love that. When first-hand property is the same price as second-hand property, you know you are on a winner, which is fantastic. The final part of the growth puzzle for me is armchair developing. Developing is a great way for people to make money. I'm a developer. Many of the people I work with are developers, and we do it all together. We sit down and we go, you know, how can a couple of us co-invest and do something special together to make money? Developments, of course, are... Uh, the idea that you can find a property, you can get a development application for it and you can turn it from one use to another use. So you buy some land which is capable of having apartments on it and you produce those apartments. You buy some land which is capable of having lots of different houses on it and you put the houses on it. Now, I love co-investing. I love doing it with other people because when you own a lot of real estate, you run out of the ability to borrow. You run out of the ability to borrow. When you run out of the ability to borrow, you need to joint venture with other people. Now, for me, I joint venture develop. I don't develop on my own. I team up with other people and that creates the opportunity to create growth. Now, I always put it like this. In this world, there is three forms of income. Effort income, passive income, and business income. Effort income is you going to work every single day. All of us who are property investors, we need jobs because jobs equals the ability to borrow money. We do need effort income. But here's the big one, passive income. Passive income comes from owning real estate that pays itself off or is real estate which you've owned for a long time and you've been able to pay down the debt. I love debt busting. I love the idea that growth inverts. See, here's the thing. A lot of people go for the idea of, I'm going to buy growth. I'm going to use my effort income from my wage. I'm going to pay $100 a week and that property is going to go off and double in value. That is the concept. We often refer to it as being negative or even negative gearing. Negative gearing yourself to a growth strategy. What if there was another way of doing it? And here's the alternative view, which I do quite often. I do all these strategies, but the debt-busting strategy is probably one of my favourites. The debt-busting strategy is pretty simple. You've got to make sure 
how you buy the property is good enough for the rents to be so good that they pay the debt but also pay off the principal of your property. So as we all know, when we borrow money, we can do principal and interest. A lot of people take interest only that are going into this I need growth to take me where I need to go. Some properties, which we call positive cash flow properties, actually create growth by debt busting. They ultimately pay off the principal and interest of your real estate. So a property today in today's world, which we live in a 3.5% interest rate market today, principal and interest, if you can find a property which is returning 7%, that property will pay off the debt or the principal of the asset you've bought. So growth actually comes from eliminating debt. And quite often they're a little bit different to a growth asset, but a very good asset because of passive income. You're passively using the property to pay or eliminate its own debt. So this is what my portfolio looks like. And this is what your portfolio should look like. You need growth deals, which require effort from you and even money from your back pocket to push them along. You need passive deals, properties which pay for themselves, which balance your portfolio, which eliminate debt on the property you've bought. You then need business income. And the business income of being a real estate investor is armchair developing. Armchair developing is just simply being involved in developments that allow you to sit in your chair and get a result year in, year out from the developments being done. Ultimately, they are usually managed for you. So I hope that gives you an insight into the idea of growth. I think in this lesson, in this podcast, we've learned some pretty cool t- tips. We know we've got to stick to livability. We know we've got to stick to location. We know sustainability in real estate is real. The longevity of real estate is a big thing for property investors. We also know that the 4X growth plan is huge for property investors. We can go out and make money on a deal, but we need the longevity of the deal to go the distance. Growth is measured by property doubling, not going up 10%. If you do see a cash-on-cash result, you're probably going to get it from buying a deal at a discount, knock down rebuild, off the plan, renovating, duplexes, amalgamations, these type of strategies. Simply put, sometimes the best way to make money instantly is to not renovate, not knock down, not do a duplex, not even do an off the plan. Sometimes it's about just asking for a better price and negotiating a very, very, very good deal. If a property's worth 500, buy it for four. All of a sudden, you're off to the races. If a property is worth 500, buy it for four, but buy it in a good location, good market, and with a little bit of sizzle that makes the behavior of the property stand out from the crowd. Hey, I hope that lesson has been awesome. I keep calling these lessons, but they're podcasts, aren't they? These podcasts or this podcast has been a good one to listen to. I'm Sam Saggers. I'm your host and I'm signing off. You have a great day or night wherever you are and wherever you're listening from. I will catch you again real soon. Thanks for tuning in to the Urban Property Investor. To never miss an episode, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your favorite app or on YouTube. And I would love it if you could give the show a rating and share it with your friends and family. In between episodes, you can always keep in touch with me by connecting on social media over Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. 
until we meet again on the next episode of the Urban Property Investor, take care and bye for now.